everybody, this is Dave Nassi with Next Level Guitar, and today I want to talk about some cool usage of some scales. Now, if you're looking at the title of the video, it says Six Tone Scales. Let's just be real simple here, people. What we're going to do is we're going to take six notes of our scale. We're going to talk about the major scale to start with. We're going to move it in octaves so we cover a wide range of the fretboard. This is going to be our main goal today. So. I'm going to quickly play the scale that I'm going to reference as far as how I'm going to use this six tone scale or how I'm going to go across the fretboard and uh, then we'll slowly play it across and then we'll go through some licks and techniques that we could do to make it so you could use this in your playing. That's the most important thing. Not just an exercise, but we'll give you probably two or three examples of how you could use this in your everyday. Hey everybody, got to tell you. Click on that link that you see below in the YouTube text box. If you want a video, a free video that is not available on YouTube, it comes with a coinciding ebook that has all kinds of great scale diagrams and shapes, everything that you need to get by in your everyday playing. So click on that link that you see below in that YouTube text box. So the scale that I'm gonna talk about is my G major scale. Everybody, if you've seen some of my videos before, you'll know that uh, I like to stick to some of these specific shapes, and uh, this is one of them. It looks just like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take six notes of this scale, and I'm gonna move it in octaves. So I'm gonna go just like this. That's just really easy, right? The three, five, seven, two, five, seven, or A, B, C, E. Then what I'm gonna do is if you look here where my first finger is, you know, referencing for some of you that are not super comfortable with where an octave may be located, right? An octave by definition is the same note that I'm starting with, but it's gonna be different in pitch. In this case, it's gonna be a bit higher in pitch. So from here, I always tell people, if you play a power chord, you just drop that third finger down. And you got your octave right there. And that's, of course, when my root note, or the note that is naming what I'm playing, starts on the sixth string. So here we go. Now what's really cool and a total no-brainer way to cover a lot of space on the fretboard is I can then jump my first finger to that position and play the exact same shape. And coincidentally, I'm going to get the exact same notes that I played in my first position. So this is a G. This is an A. This is a B. And a C, D, and an E. But look at what's happened. You've kind of diagonally worked your way across the guitar. It's one of the most common things that I hear all the time. Dave, how can I go from here to here without thinking too much about it sometimes? When we play, we just want to feel our way around the fretboard. And this is a way to do it when you don't have to necessarily learn a lot of scale shapes. We're just talking about one. We're taking six notes out of one. So we've got this so far to start. Jumping up to the fifth fret. Now, by the way that the guitar is tuned, we have a different fingering when we're going from the fourth string to the second string. Obviously, a lot of you, I'm sure, know this. This is going to be our octave here. So, yep, I can take this finger, I can jump it up here. This is my eighth fret, second string. And I can play the exact same shape that I did before, getting the exact same notes. So that gives me this. Look at how much space I covered on the fretboard. I just went from the third fret, my pinky ended up on the high E string here on the 12th fret. Great. Now, for you scale enthusiasts, yes, we did specifically go through some of these other shapes. Technically, I could say when I jumped up to this second position, I was playing out of my Dorian scale shape. Sure, I could say that as well. That shape looks like this. that's how that one finishes out. Let's be specific here and remember, A Dorian is the same notes as G major, right? I'm just starting from an A within that scale and playing in a different position so it gives me a different shape. Let's just be, you know, we'll cut and dry <laughs> about that. There's intervals that go into all your modes and, you know, of course they have to coincide with the proper chords to establish a tonality. We're not really going there right now. We're just talking about the G major scale and moving it around. But we want to reference some of the things that you have from previous lessons. And if some of this scale information seems a bit crazy, check out some of those other lessons, man. Hit pause. Go back. There's tons of cool lessons on this website that talk about all the different scale shapes and actually various interpretations of them, which is always really good. Not My way is not always the way. 
Dave's got cool ways. Everybody has cool ways of doing it. So that's the nice way to check it out. So going through this one more time, it looks just like this. Now, what can we do with that? Well, let's start with a cool pull-off pattern and shoot our way this way. This is always fun. We're gonna descend in seven notes. Now, that's a tricky pattern all into itself. And I like using this within this shape because it's gonna teach you to jump these really crazy positions across the fretboard. And that's kind of cool. You know, you're leading with your pinky, so to speak. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice I've got my first finger down. Again, this is a lick that's pretty common in some of these pull-off videos. Muting with the right hand, gotta say, for some of you who haven't seen it, I'm gonna turn my body a little bit so you can see that my, kind of the fleshy part of my upper hand here, where my thumb is, is muting out those lower strings. A lot of distortion, jump in positions. Look at that, pinky right there. So as we go across the guitar, you kind of let up a little bit on the strings and you know that way you can control some of the noise there. Shifting back this way. Let's talk about how we can ascend within this pattern. Maybe we would want to pick three notes and hammer three notes. Kind of a neat pattern. Fancy, right? But just putting the ideas together. Cool way to warm up. I always say, what's a better way to warm up than play something that you don't know how to play, right? If you work on these things at the end of your day, when you've been playing all day and you've been really enjoying yourself, feeling like you're getting somewhere, sometimes the last thing you wanna do is end your practice routine with something that's defeating or something that you can't do. Start out your day doing something completely new. Easy, low stress, right? Cause you can't do it anyways. <laughs> so you might as well start at the beginning. And before you know it, all these other things that you've been doing all day are gonna be faster and easier. You have to trick your hands. Keep your muscles guessing. So again, this would be a perfect way to start off a warm up. So we can implement all kinds of picking patterns and things within that, right? Now, what else can we do with it to make it go well into your playing? Well, here's kind of a cool lick that would be fun. What if I did the pick three, hammer three thing, and I ascend on the guitar, but when I get here, I don't want to end with some crazy shred lick. I want to maybe do a blues phrase or something to give me a little bit of resolution. Well, this is where you start to think to yourself. If I'm in the key of G, I'm also going to talk about E minor. That would be my relative minor. That's more often a lot of times where the pentatonic scale would start from is your relative minor. Relative minor is always your sixth note in your major scale. There's my E, four, five, six. Talking about six, right? That's a real common number with all of our stuff. So E minor pentatonic. Pent means five. We have five positions we could play this thing. Well, lo and behold, wouldn't you know it, one of those positions is gonna be right here. Off of our key note gonna kind of put me in that position that I finished at with my ascending lick that we did in octaves. So it looks just like this. What I'm gunning for is resolution, a way to finish this phrase. With fast guitar playing, you're only as cool as what you end up on. Everybody can play fast. You gotta do something cool with it when you get done. I'm shooting for this guy. This is my E. He's gonna give me some resolution. So I'm gonna go. Just kind of a nice way to end within the phrase. So what I did there is a simple little blues bend. I've got that E targeting for resolution. Going to the G, right? Really just tapping it all off. So kind of a cool way to end that. This would apply for any chord or any progression in the key of G, right? So that's going to give me a G chord. An A minor chord, a B minor chord, a C major, a D major, an E minor, and for all you fancy dudes, F sharp diminished. Uh, refreshing, right? We end up back at our progression. So, 
These are chords we could mix together in any combination. These are scales that we could use in six notes that cover a lot of space on the fretboard. And we're also thinking we want to resolve these things and just kind of get our brain working and mixing our pentatonic scale in there all at the same time. So the moral of today's lesson, take your scales, move it in six notes, cover a wide range on the fretboard, think of some new licks that you could do within it. Doesn't have to be necessarily the ones that I did. Anything that you could think of, you could slide within them. Anything that you could think of, trills. However you want to use these ideas, it's visualization. That's the most important thing. That's what I want to accomplish with today's lesson. So I hope you got it. I hope you dig the idea here. Take any of your scale shapes, move them in six tones, cover some range on the fretboard. And you know what? I will see you next time. And I got to say, go to the website, nextlevelguitar.com. There's over a thousand video lessons on there that are invaluable in your everyday. And you know what? You can test drive the website for free for three days. Go on there and check it out, browse through it and see all the brilliant amount of knowledge that we have there at the site. And you know what? I'm proud to be a part of it. So check it out, nextlevelguitar.com.